So let's get this how good you can do with Hay Hower case, which is Hay Hower 2018-08 City of Hay Hower Service. Sir, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this one is not a rezoning or a plan development. This is a text amendment um, being proposed by the city itself. Um, this is a culmination of several months of discussions um, with the city council and the city attorney about it. Adding some uh, provisions in the Hay Hour Zoning Ordinance that pertain to temporary commercial use. Uh, we went over this in good detail at the work session. Uh, the Hay Hour officials are here, and since this is a public hearing, they are here to speak to you about it. Um, and you can ask questions of them or of me, but otherwise, I'll entertain any questions that you may have for me at this point. Commissioner, questions for staff? I do. Commissioner Gladwell. This is just really a clarification for me. I, I wasn't able to be here at the work session. I just wanted to understand the language. Uh, <clears throat> so on the, under 9-21, the, the first, article number one. Mm -hmm. So is this telling me that um, if you have a temporary retail use truck, you are able to use it for <clears throat> a duration of 30 days, and then you have to put it away for, what, I mean, what is this paragraph telling us? Can, can you just explain that to me? The same thing for the food. It looks like the food truck can use it for seven days, and then they have to wait. Correct. It is, days. What it's is a that? general, um, currently there is nothing in the Hay Arizona mm -hmm. Ordinance that deals with this. There is some items in Valostas, which is what this is tailored after. Um, temporary retail use could be food vending or other things. Mm -hmm. And so in general, it's a 30 days per calendar year limitation. However, for food trucks, it is seven consecutive days limitation. Okay, before they can repeat. Um, but if they repeat, they have to wait 30 days before they can come back for another seven. So it's, in other words, special rules for food vending that don't apply to other types of vending. So somebody with a food truck can operate a food business for seven right. days. This would be a food truck parked on private property. On private property. Correct. Right. That's not that excludes festivals and... Correct. Right. Festivals are exempt. This a is nice train truck mm -hmm. roaming through a neighborhood on public right-of-way mm -hmm. is exempt, which is why the city attorney put a definition in here. For an ice cream truck, and I would interpret that to be someone selling sandwiches or something else. Not doesn't have to be ice cream, but they've got that covered in here. Um, but just like in Valdosta too, I mean, we've got ice cream trucks that go through our neighborhood, but there are mobile vendors that go and park on private property in a parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been our experience many times they want to stay there for a long time. And you really then get into the question of is it temporary or permanent? And then how temporary is temporary? So that's why these time frames are put in here. Um, so that's the difference. So, uh, just for my ignorance on my last question, all of them. So, an ice cream truck that rolls. Right, the, the zoning ordinances have no jurisdiction over public streets. Those are on public lands. So if a mobile unit rolls, is that, does that fall in the same jurisdiction as the ice cream truck? It's defined that way so it's not confused with a, a truck that parks on private property to conduct business. I mean, otherwise, on public streets, you're subject to the rules for the public street in terms of traffic flow and not. Uh, you know, parking correctly and that type of thing, stopping very short periods of time. I mean, think of like a, even the lawn mower, you know, service that parks their vehicle on the street. <laughs> I hate that. You know, and that gets into a whole other discussion. Matt, how does what you just described what's being proposed as far as the seven day, 30 day thing? Mm -hmm. Is that, how does that compare to the city of Valdosta? Is it the same? Or? In Valdosta, it's a 60 days. Uh, maximum time period, but then you have to wait before you come back. So yes, these time frames are a little bit shorter and hang out. Right. As far as the uh, the barbecue stand and the produce stand, mm -hmm. uh, they would have to go. That I think would be a good question for the applicant representatives who are here. 
it, on how retroactive they want to make the adoption of these rules. And I think that's something that their city council would need to make a statement about at their council meeting. Okay. Um, but tech, normally, under ordinances and ordinance amendments, it becomes effective then, and anything that was legal up until then is grandfathered in. Um, however, there is the possibility for adopting code changes like this to make them retroactive. But it has to be stipulated by city council. Okay. May I ask a question? I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I just had a question about, you were talking about uh, existing businesses being grandfathered in. How is it that the hot dog stand outside Home Depot operates all the time? Are they grandfathered in? They are from a long time ago, even by the health department. They are considered part of Home Depot now. Okay. In terms of their licensing and so forth, they're wired in, they've got plumbing, etc. Um, I would take that as grandfathering to the extreme in my book. They have been there a very long time, but that's how they're viewed officially. <laughs> it's part of Home Depot, and as a use by itself, it's allowed in that shopping center under that commercial zone. But it is owned by Home Depot, it's business. I do not know all those details. I think they may have actually purchased the structure and leased it out, but that's speculation. Yeah. So could I just... But I had a, a good discussion about that one with the health department because I was curious just how they regarded it. And they regarded it as part of Home Depot. Big structure. No different than, you know, Sam's that has a snack bar inside. Theirs is a snack bar outside. So, if you may, just bear with me on my ignorance here. So could it in a duration of one year, or for the course of one year, um, somebody that owns a commercial retail use truck, other than food vending, they are able to operate their truck, their business, for 30 calendar days, not necessarily consecutive. So they're within one year duration, or how does that work? What is not to exceed 30 days per calendar year on that same lot or parcel. Um, so they can operate that Right. business for 30 days within one year of whatever they obtain that permit. Right. It's subject to all the conditions of their permit approval and conditions of the ordinance. Okay. And then if you have a food truck, then you're able to operate for seven oh, days. At a time. At a time. You wait 30 days, you apply them for the permit, you right. operate for seven days on that same lot. Correct. And that's those the consecutive days? Seven consecutive days is how it's worked. So whether you choose to use all seven or not is one thing, but you get approval for a seven-day period. If you're only there two, that's still your seven-day period. So what's the purpose of it? I mean, why would anybody want to operate a business for seven days and put it away? So I, I guess I'm trying. I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding. Lots of parcels. Yeah. This is intended, I think, to be restricted. Um, my, my understanding is, is that if they come and work, set their truck or van up for seven days, then after that permit expires at the end of that seven days, then they have to wait 30 days before they can come back for another seven days. Is that correct? Correct, at that location. Okay. So they could move parcels and start the next day. They could have an approval for a different property, which sets a whole new time frame in the motion for the other property. Here again, we are limiting them on the parcels that they can set up because if there is no building or commercial business on that property, then that business or that landowner cannot lease that property to a food truck. Correct. The parcel itself has to pass muster, pass right. review, and be eligible. And how does that compare with that officer's ordinance? The, these provisions are almost identical. Okay. And a lot of it's common sense type stuff. You have to have available parking, there has to be restroom. Valdosta does require that uh, another operating business be on the property. Um, you know, it's just so we don't have these popping up on vacant lots around town. I mean, keep in mind there's an interesting dynamic between the two cities. Valdosta has very large commercial areas, lots of shopping center, parking lots, um, things that Tejara doesn't have quite as many of. So there's a different dynamic going on. And, and 
And I think that helps explain and justify the difference in time frames. Um, you know, not quite the same commercial environment in the high hey, register as in Valdosta. And then also, like I said at the work session, with any new ordinance change, that's never perfect the first time. So it's really to get a system or a process into place that does not yet exist, and then see how it goes. Um, keeping in mind, like we talked about the work session, staff will keep its own notes on this since we are involved in an administrative permit review that we have not previously been involved with in Hangar. We might have some comments of our own. May I ask? Mr. Glavin? So uh, one thing you did mention, which was one of my questions, is um, how do they go about toilet facilities? Because I don't think it specifically spells it out in here, or maybe the reference to the public health department is adequate. But right. Is there... well, health department has it for food service of any mm -hmm. kind. Health department has its own rules and regulations and application processes mm -hmm. that are in play. In so what is the cost associated with a permit for a food truck? That's a fee that will have to be set by city council. What is it here? If you in Valdosta, it is free. There is no permit fee for the administrative permit, but if you get a tent, there is a tent fee associated with it, and that's as far as it goes. And is a business license required? Correct. But the business license can be Which for has its own fees as part of the business license process. And that would, that would be, that would, the duration for that is a full year, as in your Calendar business. year, correct. Right. Correct. Okay. I mean, like in the cities, in the same way, hey, I lost any business operating within the city needs to have that local mm -hmm. business license. So you're buying a business license for a year, but you don't actually get to operate for that year. Well, right. it depends on how you want to operate. If you want to lease a commercial space somewhere inside a building, then yes, you can. And one more question, I promise. What is the logic of tying a mobile vendor, retail or food, to, another, to having another commercial business on a property already? Why is, what is the, one is, is the one of the requirements is to have restroom facilities available to your customers, and a vacant lot is not going to have those. Mm -hmm. um, you'd have to go off site, and so you one you have that, and two you've got someone there keeping an eye on the property, who is either the owner operating the business or a commercial tenant, who has got custody of the property. It's not just I mean someone responsible for it other than the vendor. So temporary toilet facilities is not adequate to provide? That's something that's part of the application process. They've got to demonstrate that it's there and available longer. So in Hangara's mission it's a different dynamic than El Bosco. <coughs> Our downtown area is very compact. So even though we have this one lot that doesn't actually have an existing business on it, it is surrounded by existing businesses within a few footsteps. So, I mean, the toilet facility rationale doesn't really seem to carry here. All right, as long as they have permission, and if anyone wants to deviate from these, that's a separate process mm -hmm. that's you know, time consuming and expensive, uh, a variance process based on hardship. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing written in here to allow them to go off site. Well, if, I'm sorry, I'm, I am struggling a little bit with this, uh, but one of the conditions here, one of the items does specifically talk about um, not permitting this vehicle on a vacant parcel unless there is a commercial building on it or unless the parcel is owned by the permit applicant. Right. So therefore the... That's the one exception. An owner, so the applicant is the owner of the vacant lot then they are responsible for their own property. But then the logic of the temporary facilities does not, it's not, it's not. And they still would have to prove uh -huh. that somewhat. I agree. So, so I, I mean, I do have a problem with that one. I think that's criteria here. I, I, honestly, I think that's intended to target a particular <laughs> piece of product, a, a particular piece of property that they are currently, where they do <coughs> the truck that parks on occasion. And as I said, there are multiple businesses within footsteps of that. So um, I just don't see how, with the dynamic being so different in Hagar, I just don't see how that this would be a practical condition. Mm -hmm. I, I, 
That's a health department yeah. requirement for food so, vendors, uh, right. or commissary, right. which is inspected separately mm -hmm. and maintained. But it's not. In, but this is not being required in here. It's well, something the health department already requires. There's no need to have it in the local ordinance. But that's required of food vendors, not necessarily of other retail vendors. Correct. I mean, if you're selling shoes, you don't need a commissary for that. Mm -hmm. we got a question, Mr. Commissioner. Yes, sir. These food vendor trucks, are they coming and setting up, or are they coming and moving every day? Look, look, I'm talking about if I come, to, I come to Lake Park, or I come to Hay High, and mm -hmm. I got me a, vending, a, a food vendor truck, mm -hmm. I'm going to pull it up on your lot, and I'm going to sell... Food, uh, sandwiches or potato chips are there for eight hours. Okay. I can't stay no longer than eight hours. I got to move. Do they come in and they stay eight, ten, twelve, fourteen? They, up to them, they get their approval for up to seven consecutive days, and how they want to use that is up to them, unless there's something stipulated in the approval of the permit. They do have to be shut down by 10 p.m. Hmm. Yeah, there's an hours of operation right. clause in here. Looks like to me, though, as they, a they, vendor truck, they would have to move every day. They do. They move from town to town, from location to location. Yeah. I know the Hibachi guy, yeah. he the, has locations in other towns where he goes, and he was only coming maybe one day right. a week. And the health department requires food trucks like that to return yeah. to their commissary to be serviced okay. and resupply and so on. They don't, I don't think, stipulate eight hour of the day to do it. I was, but just just that it is I was just concerned about setting up, setting up a business. Right. And the whole idea of these, and the operating phrase here is temporary use. These are designed to be temporary. Yeah. And like we talked about the work session, the struggle we run into in Valdosta is many of these businesses want to set up permanently um, in an area, like the Home Depot trailer that has been there for many years. Mm -hmm. We're trying to keep more of those from happening. And then you get into the competition of those businesses with bricks and mortar businesses that have a whole different set of criteria and overhead and everything else. You know, my feeling on this is that these food trucks, at least the ones that I've come across in my couple of years of planning events for AR, they don't want to sit in one location for long periods of time. They want to move from town to town and location to location, and yeah. that per, you know that furthers their exposure. Right. Um, they just want the ability to come in and park for a few hours and then tomorrow go somewhere else without it being such a hassle. Mm -hmm. um, and 
and I understand how that the restaurants feel, you know, that they may not have the uh, overhead that a brick and mortar would have, but that's the choice they made. The brick and mortars chose to build a building, and the food truck people chose to buy a food truck. And they had different responsibilities, and they had different um, um, requirements that they have to follow and the guidelines that they have to follow. So I just don't want to, you know, say because these people have not invested in Hey Hira, we don't want them. And further, you know, I feel like this is so restricted that we're going to open a gateway for other businesses that we don't want to see at Hey Hira. You know, we're setting a precedent here that, you know, well, we don't like food trucks, and the purpose of this proposal is to limit food trucks in Hey Hira. Well, who's to say that, you know, we, want, we don't want to have some other type of business. We don't want to have a pool store in Hey Hira. You know, let's limit that business. So that's just my fear here is that this is a gateway to something else. I'd like to ask thanks for all your discussion and comments, and we will move forward with uh, public participation. In, anyone this time wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? I'm Barry Robinson. I reside at 6083 Portman Road in Hay and I own and operate the clubhouse in Hay Howard. Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission, I appreciate the opportunity this evening to share with you uh, some of the, uh, the thoughts that uh, I have shared in recent months with uh, Hay Howard City Council members. Uh, and one thing that we would ask you to keep in mind about this ordinance is uh, this, uh, this amendment is that uh, there has been um, uh, a myriad of opportunity uh, where the Hay Howard City Council members uh, have, uh, have, have gathered input both at, uh, at public meetings uh, as, as, as well as uh, is, is in individual conversations. And uh, I'm, I'm here this evening, I don't claim to uh, represent the restaurants in Hay Howard uh, per se, but I would say that I am representative uh, of the restaurant owners. And one of the purposes uh, of this uh, text amendment is to bring order, uh, you know, where, where there's currently disorder. It's been characterized uh, as, as, being, uh, as being restrictive, and uh, I, would, I propose that that, it, that is the nature. I mean, zoning ordinances uh, by their nature are restrictive, and, um, and just and, and share, and, and again, I mean, this, this is just uh, my story. But uh, and it's and it's not really about uh, about fairness of overhead. Uh, overhead uh, is a choice. Uh, complying with regulations uh, is not a choice. That, that that's something that uh, that we are required to do if uh, we want to participate in an economic pot. Any given community uh, has a finite economic pot. Now, lots of Dallas County has one. A power has one. And uh, those of us that choose to open businesses uh, because we desire to participate in an economic pot uh, have to meet uh, certain standards in order to do that. Uh, in our case, uh, those standards uh, involve over a six to uh, eight month uh, period working with a planning and zoning uh, staff, uh, spending $40,000 uh, in architectural fees uh, in order to get the glass just right, get the stone just right, get the placement just right, get the landscaping just right, uh, $250,000 for the site work, uh, for the privilege of building a building to participate uh, in, in, in that economic pot and make sure that we, that we had uh, order aesthetics, uh, that, that we uh, contributed uh, to, to a, a quality presence uh, in the community. Uh, as uh, as is our uh, responsibility, and so what we have had uh, historically over the last uh, uh, several months in Hayhara is, uh, is is disorder with food trucks, and so uh, the purpose of this text amendment uh, is to bring order, is to bring uh, a, a, a appropriate order, and um, the uh, when when you consider the uh, uh, the, the, the contribution. That, uh, that, uh, that businesses make uh, to, to a community for the privilege of operating in that community. And again, in our case, uh, $16,500 in sewer tap fees, $12,000 to correct uh, detention pond uh, uh, deficiency that was, uh, that was, uh, that was negligently uh, approved uh, in, in, in the past. And those, those, 
those are things again that we're contributing to a, to, to a quality community. And um, the uh, uh, food, food trucks at the present time uh, are able to circumvent all those things. In other words, all you need to do is roll a trailer in town, set up, get permission to set up on somebody's property, and you are participating in the same economic pot. And that, that, that's not a level playing field. It has nothing to do with overhead. It has to do with, uh, with, uh, with commitment to, to a community and, uh, and, to the, uh, and to the well-being of the community. Now, it's my understanding, and the, you know, the mayor, the city manager, uh, you know, could speak further to it. It's my understanding as far as concern over existing businesses that have been there, the barbecue stand, the produce stand, that the, uh, that the city attorney uh, has assured city council members that you know the city council can deal with that if they choose to do so. So that's that issue should be taken off the table. Um, then I, I, I'll just ask you to, uh, and, and then I, I would also say that, that everything that I did, I did willingly volunteer. No, 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 nobody made me do it because I chose to, to open that business because I wanted to, I wanted to do it number one, but I also wanted to, uh, to have the opportunity to benefit from that economic pot, to, uh, to, to, to have an opportunity, at least a chance uh, to, uh, to make a profit. And if the, if, uh, if the food truck can pull into town any time that they want to, any time they can get a property owner's permission, or without any sort of restrictions or regulations, and dip on the same economic pot, it, uh, it disrupts that economic environment. And uh, and there uh, there there is something to making a commitment. Yes, that is a choice, but a commitment is a commitment. And uh, and and a, as a as a uh, a, a group, you, you commissioners as a body, and uh, even the, the government um, agencies that make the final decisions have to consider what kind of community they want. You want order, or you want chaos. And, and clear through you want order that that's that, that's the reason that you exist and the reason uh, that, that you do what you do and the reason you oversee what you see but in our case uh, there are uh, you know because we made that commitment uh, we've been able to provide 32 jobs for people in that part of it and for there so there are 32 people there that depend on our business for their livelihood and uh, when that is disruptive uh, it, it impacts those people and uh, we hear the notion of, uh, of living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, I would propose to remind you that, uh, that, that many of our servers live not paycheck to paycheck, they live day to day. Uh, the nature of a server's income uh, is, is based a lot of times uh, on the tips they take on that day. And, and an unplanned disruption of uh, business uh, in, does impact them. It impacts them personally and impacts their ability to take care of their, uh, of, of their, of their family. And we, um, we ask you to keep that in mind. We also ask you to keep in mind the, um, what an existing business puts back into the community. Uh, some of it by choice, some, some, some of it uh, not, not, not by choice, but yet we do it. In our case, we contribute $26,000 a year, or, or, or we did last year, local option, special local option sales tax. Uh, we contributed seventy-five thousand dollars to city, uh, seventy-five hundred dollars. I'm sorry to city and county property tax. You know that about half of that goes to our school system. Um, seventy-five hundred dollars a year in, in, in water, sewage, and garbage. We uh, we we uh, invested uh, on, on opening sixteen thousand five hundred in sewer tap fees and, and utility extension. And what that is, that's a contribution to the uh, to the to, to, to the infrastructure. And we would just propose that those things uh, not, not be taken lightly or, or, or flippantly and, 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 and to be considered in creating a fair economic environment uh, for our community. And we, we realize the importance, too, of, of, of giving back to the community. Again, we do it by choice, but um, we provide uh, 3,600 uh, uh, student achievement certificates uh, to, 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 to the schools every year. Uh, to Hay Hire Elementary School and Pine Grove Elementary School to incentivize students uh, to do their best. Uh, we have fundraisers, and, um, and obviously, if anybody can come into the community anytime they want and just get out of that body, we'll, 
then uh, it, it, it impairs our ability to do it. I, I appreciate the opportunity to share this with you. Any, any questions for the presenter? Any questions at all? Thank you very much, sir. Uh, and I will, uh, I will allow at this time for another representative like to come forward and speak in favor of this request. Our time is short, but I will allow one more to come forward and speak in favor. There be none. Anyone that here this evening like to speak against this text request, please come forward this time. Anyone wishing to speak against this request, please come forward this time. My name is Gretchen Porterman. I live at 6565 Porterman Road. The gentleman that owns the Huddle House is my neighbor. I'm happy that he owns the Huddle House. It's a, it's a great it's a great thing in our community. I sort of think we're heading down the wrong road here about food trucks, though. Food trucks, in my mind, are they come to Hayhira on Tuesday and Thursday or Wednesday and Friday. They don't come for seven days at a time. And that the way that ordinance needs to be is that if you buy a food truck license, you can come to Lake Park or someplace and you drive your truck up and you're on the thing and the, the Cuban sandwich competitor comes on Monday and the hibachi place comes on Tuesday and the Mexican competitor comes on Wednesday and, and different kinds of food trucks come on different days of the week and so the, the way that you would get your license would be you can come n number of days per week or month. You buy your license for the whole year so you get your license up front, however much that is, and then you use, you can use it up to a maximum of n days per week. You can come whatever the ordinance wants to be. You can come one day a week, and then you park on whoever said you could park by them. Park by that. Um, that that seems to me because I promise you, I'm not going to be starting a food truck. Uh, not not something I'm going to be doing. But hey, I was poised to change in a dramatic way with the opening of the soccer fields. Mm -hmm. A hotel, mm -hmm. better than the Knights Inn, it's going to come to Hanhara. Mm -hmm. Other restaurants, brick and mortar restaurants, Hanhara's going to become a pretty hip little place with soccer families coming there. Right. And they'll like to have food trucks where they can get a sandwich or a whatever the heck they want, a barbecue. Um, and if you want to grandfather the barbecue guy in, you've got two liquor stores now. You know, it, hey, how is changing? So let's change in a good way and, and welcome trucks, not make it the don't come to here, but make it so that we're at a hip place. Um, about the vegetable guy, uh, I, don't, I don't understand why we're regulating, what's, what part of that is, why is this ordinance about the, I can't make a tent, because I sell vegetables, so maybe I want to, actually that vegetable guy sells my vegetables. So, uh, what what's that about? Uh, I know you can't answer me, uh, but <laughs> I, I feel for the vegetable guy because, you know, he's selling fresh vegetables, he's got regular customers. Why do we want to put him out of business? He's not, and he's not there every day, because Wednesday does Saturday, I think, so not, he's really not there every day. A number of days that you can have your pop-up store and then that's how many you can have. That's, but I'm against this whole seven days thing or only 30 days. That's bad. Bad idea. Hey, how is changing? And we need to be ready to be changing. And we're going to have more restaurants. Anyway. Any questions for our presenter? Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else here wishing to speak against this request, please come forward this time. <laughs> My name is Garrett Gibbons. I live at 2356 Old Union Road in Ado, Georgia, and I'm the owner of the Hibachi Highway business. Um, to my knowledge, I would think these ordinances would be put into place to protect the city of Hayhower, and I feel like the ordinances that are being proposed here are put in, order, or put in place to protect the business owners or restaurant owners of Hayhower. And to me, that doesn't seem very fair at all. Um, as far as us coming seven days a week to anywhere, I don't think that would be a very smart business plan for somebody with a food truck. Um, I don't think it would work. And I, my fear is that if this ordinance goes into place and they hire, that the other surrounding cities and counties are going to put in ordinances that are similar to this. Not saying that this isn't similar to one of my offices, but 
as restrictive as this, and it's made just simply to keep us out. It's not about the vegetable stand guy. It's not about the barbecue guy. It's about us. And uh, I feel like that a lot of the chaos or disorder that has been mentioned about us coming to town is uh, it's not. It's it's just speculation, and it's all people's opinions. When I came to town, the only person who had a problem with us being where we were parked was the guy who owns the Main Street Deli, which is directly beside where we park, and uh, he doesn't own the lot we park. The lot is, I guess, technically vacant, but that lot before we came was used for parking for five a grocery store for Mr. Danny's uh, frame shop. It's used for everybody that parks at these businesses that are next door to the lot. And uh, whenever we came, he, was, he wasn't happy about it. And he and I became to uh, agreement that I would only come there on Sundays or Mondays, which are days that he's closed. So we've been as friendly, as nice, as respectful to any other business owners, especially him, as we could possibly be. And uh, I just think that there definitely needs to be some other, or some other, some changes to this uh, ordinances that are going to put in place. It just doesn't seem fair to me. So, do I have any questions to me about anything on this? Commissioners, any questions for presenter? Yes. Um, <coughs> where else do you take your food trucks? We go to Nashville, Ada, and Hanover. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally, like I said, we do one day a week. We used to do Mondays in Hanover, Wednesdays in Nashville, and Tuesday, Thursday, Friday in Ada. Do any of the other um, towns have restrictions on the food truck business? No. Mm -hmm. Not that, not that we currently go to, but everywhere we go to, it's, it's a new thing down here in this area. So everywhere we go to, they say, you're going to do what now? So it's kind of, there, there should be ordinances in place to prevent chaos, but not ordinances to restrict someone who's just trying to make a living just like everybody else up there. I, I feel like the, uh, I don't think that whenever a bit new business comes to town, whether it's a restaurant or a clothing store or construction company, I don't think it's the city official's responsibility to ensure that their business is profitable. I think it's their responsibility to make sure that they're not operating unlawfully or, you know, like so much that causes harm to the community, and I don't think it's ordinance that's designed for that. Mr. Chairman, can I? Um, Mr. Gaines, can you just share with me some of the um, oversight that you have as a food truck operator? Um, it's, uh, it's not as easy as everybody thinks, like uh, some of the comments made that we can just pull up somewhere anytime we want to, whenever we want to, that it doesn't work like that. Um, it's, uh, we, we have the same loops and purples to jump just like any other restaurant owner does at Spring Water. We have the same inspection, we have to inspect the clocks, not only on the mobile unit, but also on our base operations. So, and, yeah, uh, as far as putting money back into the community, I mean, we we pay for our business licenses, for our permits, and uh, like I pay rent for Mr. Bypass, so he pays property taxes on that property, so we may not put the same amount of money back into the community as a brick and mortar restaurant, but we do have to abide by the same rules and pay the same taxes as everybody else. So it seems to me to be a level playing field. Uh, without telling me specifically, can you tell me how much it costs when you get set up in your food truck business? Was it into six figures or pretty close yes. to six figures? Not there either. Thank you. Any other questions for the presenter? Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak against this request? Is it anyone else wishing to speak against this request? There being a commission, any discussion on this request amongst ourselves before I ask for a motion? I'd like to make a comment. Please. Uh, I can appreciate what Barry spoke of. I know we've been working long and hard with the planning commission here and with the city and county officials and they are. And there was a lot of hoops to jump through and hurdles to, to overcome. But on the other hand, we've got to be able to do something that's going to, to help pay higher. Uh, they're open, like he said, one day a week. 
uh, to, to have a permit to buy a city license for a year and be able to operate for seven days and then have to reapply after 30 days. Uh, it's, it's, it just seems very restrictive. Uh, I know he's only one food truck and if, if more decide to come then you, 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 you know, we may have six or eight that you know, I realize that. But, uh, and some of the restrictions in this about having it on, uh, I can understand the health and sanitation board, but uh, if, if, Mr. if somebody, if one of Mr. Vibash's kids wanted to put a trailer over there, he couldn't, because the property is not in his name. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we just need to look at it. We need to grandfather the two police places that we have in. We, you know, the, the barbecue stand and the produce stand because they have been in business before this was even thought of. So that, that's all I've got to say. All right. Any other comments on that, Commissioner? If not, at this time I will ask for a motion on ARK 2018-01, a text amendment. Mr. Chairman? Ms. Rankin? I make a motion that we deny this amendment. I have a motion to deny by Ms. Roundtree. Commissioner Roundtree, do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Commissioner Hightower, any discussion on the motion and the second before I ask for a vote? Any discussion? I would make a recommendation to them, Mr. Chairman that they come back and reconstruct their amendment to this only ordinance. Leave it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on the table. Any other discussion on that? There being none, all in favor of the motion, please seek on the raise your right hand. Okay. Ms. Carmel, that is unanimous, 7 0. Denial of the motion. <coughs> of the text. Guys and gals, 